Hello, this is Max One, Max Strake, sorry. <laughs> I've been having a bit of trouble with my OBS and I've been trying to record this um, uh, most of the day and I'm getting quite frustrated about it. Um, I saw this article on Power Automate Desktop is now free. So apparently they're going to be adding it to Windows 10 um, uh, possibly as a just a combined thing to do. So I was quite excited about that. I'm interested in automation and I've been doing quite a lot of stuff with Auto Hotkey which is an open source tool. So anyway, you can go onto this. Um, if In this article, you'll see a link through here, which brings you onto this link through here. And down the bottom, you can see there's a downloading. And if you hit that button, it just hits a download file all the way through there. So it's very keen on this. So anyway, what it does is it brings through this little, very simple interface through here where you can click a new flow and you give it a name. And then it goes and opens up another page which would have nothing on here at all through here. And you pull something from these actions on the side and just add them. So it's a drag and drop process that you can do. The other method that you can do is that you can do a web recorder or a desktop recorder. So if you're in a desktop, you could say open Excel, um, uh, save, save that file as a blank sheet to, a, can you give it a file name through there? And then you start doing something in the first sheet and just doing some formulas and stuff like that. And it'll record that. And then you, it'll actually write the script for you. Now, if you're doing it through both of those two methods, or you're doing something on the web recorder where you're going in, logging into your SharePoint or something like this, or doing some stuff through there, it can iterate through those sorts of things and it'll remember them. And then you can write the script. Or you can come across here. You can choose to build up your things, which is what I did. I haven't tried these recorder ones through here. And you can take a variable or something or an item that an action you want to do. You bring it across here. You drag it into line. You can move them up and down. And this one here, I'm going to make a new var called xxx that var. Now, if you leave a gap in there, it doesn't like it. It wants it to be two. Now, you can assign this a, a number or name the tree and or else you can assign it a variable now if you assign a variable instead of wiping out what's there it just puts a variable on the end so that's quite i suppose if you've got a whole lot of things that you're assigning it to but what was actually happening when i changed my mind on things i was adding something into here and then i just wasn't deleting that other part and i was saving now you see it's grayed out here and then it was breaking and it was just saying an error now, when I've got it here, you see it grayed out because it's going through and doing a check because it's assuming you're an idiot. So it's checking to see the what bit of code is actually right, that you've assigned a variable to a correct thing. Now, you see over the side here, there's a whole load of variables through here. Now, if I go, if this one here, I've got this set variable count and then I've got count here and I've got count here. If I go into here and I modify that count to maybe count one, I've suddenly round, I've got, I've used the name, same variable somewhere else. If I change that to count one, these two don't automatically change. I find that quite frustrating. Um, uh, so that's a bit uh, of something that's a bit of a nuisance. Um, so there's a few things that I do find a bit awkward um, in this. I find it very, very slow. And I find it's quite, uh, you know, like, if you're doing this when you're first learning, when you're first learning, fine, it's okay to do a bit of drag and drop. But once after a while, you want to speed up a bit. This doesn't let you do it the only way. You can copy and paste, but then you have to go in and edit. If you click on something like that and press Enter, it will open it up for editing through there. Now you've got things like display message. So if you're coming through and you're suddenly saying, "Have I got the right information at this point in time?" when it's gone through and done a test. You can actually come through, you can click on these little buttons on the side here, and then you can enable and disable something. So you might actually have a display message just to do a check, but when you've got the script running as you want it, you'll actually just turn them off because you don't need them as part of the thing. And that is almost a bit of a pause as well. So I can save this. Now, if we look on here, I can save it and I can exit. That's all I can do with this at this point in time with the file. So I can't do a save as. All I can do is a save. So if I want a copy of this, the only way that I can do that is to go from here, select all of these items all the way through, and go control copy, make a new flow, and go and paste all of those into that flow. So I find that's a bit of a nuisance. Well, you can't save as a copy or not. 
is a bit stupid. Now, when I actually went to try and track down where those flows were, because I thought, oh, well, if I can only save, how do I share it with somebody else? Because you're suddenly thinking, if I've got a good flow, I want to get handed around. But this desktop is only for you. So it's only for the one person who logs in. So the other thing, when I tried looking to see where the file is saved, it's actually saved in OneDrive under a certain thing that has this very long string. So it's most probably it talks about tokens and stuff as well. So therefore, if you're on another PC, like you're working at home and you've got your uh, power automate desktop there, you save it. Then when you go to work, you just open up and you're logging into your actual thing through here and it'll download the latest edition of it. So that's good. Apart from if you've got slow internet or something, it's going to take ages to actually do through there. Now, another thing with this that I find a bit of a nuisance is if I'm going to run this script here now. You look at the time it actually takes to run this thing. It's almost like I'm, you know, code should not run this slow. It really, really, really shouldn't. Um, because I've got a feeling that it's almost running somewhere else. Although it's saying it's a desktop tool, I've got a feeling that this is going over the web and it's onto a server and running something. Still isn't running. Now you can see it's actually stepping through that code. Now it's going through a loop, found the thing, it's got a display message. Now it's going to pop up a, a message for me. And there we are. So you, now I am running OBS at the same time as this, but it was still pretty damn slow. And that's another checkpoint that I'm going through to see. So when I was actually doing this as a comparison with something else that I was doing, you would see now it's actually filled in all of those. So once I've got all of these um, variables filled in, I can actually just run this last bit, run the next action. So just run, I can sit in the end and I can say run the next action and it'll just run the last two bits of code for me because it's already... Um, filled out the variables of all the other ones that if it's going through and pulling information it's already got um, something in there that it's just testing so that's quite good in its way but it's just slow now from the point of view it does have an awful lot of interesting things that you can play with to a point when I actually looked on here and I found these templates that you can do, so under Power Automate, there's templates, and there's a lot of smart templates. When I tried signing in and getting these, I had the wrong account. So I'm not allowed to use these unless I've got a business account or an educational account. And then it's also got these connectors. So it's linking up all of these different programs doing all these smart things. So it has these list of connectors, and there's an awful lot of them. I'm not going to scroll down because the computer seems to be going so slow now. So you've got standard connections and you've got premium connections. But the standard connections have things like Google um, uh, Google calendars or Google Sheets and stuff like that. So it's just not totally the um, uh, uh, Microsoft environment as well. There's a lot of other packages through here. Now, this computer that I'm running on is a um, Surface Book. So it's got an i7 processor on it. It's got a GPU in the back of it. It's got um, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I've also got an optic uh, fiber um, broadband that I'm linked in. So I'm not coming across Wi-Fi. I'm actually got cabled into here. And it's still sluggish. Now, it shouldn't be this sluggish. But this is the thing. Because they're trying to make it reasonably robust for non-coders. They got to the point where they've made it so sluggish. Uh, very, very sluggish indeed because they're checking the code in the background. The other thing with is also after you've, um, after you improve, once you start learning things, you should be able to have shortcuts for all of these so that you can get along and speed up or you should be able to look at the back code to actually do it. But I can't see any of that. So it comes as a switch if you're working on something and this I was doing as a one-to-one -one comparison as a similar bit of code that I do in all our hot key, key scripts that this takes so long to do that do I carry on with it to improve myself and to learn a bit more to see where the efficiencies are or do I walk away from it? Um, now it has a few interesting features that maybe items might be harder to code in all our hotkey scripts and this may actually have a nicer interface for doing things. 
And so it might be nice to be able to write something, quite four or five lines of something that will actually just do an automated action that might be quite handy, like pushing the file up to an FTP site and maybe pushing it down from there to another site or to another PC or something like that so you can move things around. You could do that via email as well in, in a way. You know, there are certain, certain solutions you, do, you can do. And actually in order hotkey, I've actually found trying to do emails in that um, a bit of a pain because a lot of them are being blocked now by Google and uh, all of those. They're trying to make them more secure, which is fine in its way. And this may be a method to actually get past something like that. But frankly, I just, I, 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 it goes so slow, I forget what I'm doing and then I get frustrated because I had an idea, but it's just gone past. I've just been spending and wasting so much time doing extremely trivial little things. So, um, overall, I don't think I'll be using it. It is a free tool. It has some free things. It's got OCR cryptography, um, some really cool little things here, and maybe those are worth spending some time on. So those might be worth the frustration of it. The other thing with this is that, you know, once you actually have something built and that process is built, It'll just run all the time, you know, and then if it isn't, you'll find a fault in it, fix that fault, and then, you know, it'll usually, you'll, you'll get yourself a nice bit, nice bit of robust code that will run all the time. So once it's built, it's a runner, and uh, it sits down in your tray down here, and uh, you can then run them whenever you want. Now, when you uh, download this, the first thing it does is it goes into your startup, and puts power things and also um, the uh, it does two things inside your um, startup is it starts the power bi and also the um, one that runs the um, flows so therefore there every time you boot your computer up it's shutting those ones into here so you may actually want to cancel out and say no i don't want those sitting there and they're saying stop all running flows etc etc so those ones are automated to happen over a certain period of time now inside all the hotkey scripts again you're running scripts and they're sitting in the tray here what i've actually got with my older hotkey scripts is that i've got a lot of the interesting ones that i want sitting up here this thing here is just uh, order hockey. Uh, this is quick access pop up that I had to use. So I have these scripts running through here, but I only trigger them when I need them because I, they're, they're not frequent ones that I use all the time. Um, so I actually find this a hell of a lot handy. I just find setting up this other one is just so time consuming. Now, the other thing that you might say is triggering things. So you can say, I want this to happen hourly or I want it to happen daily or triggers and stuff like that. Now, within Windows environment, it's got a thing called Task Scheduler. So you can just go into here and just type in Task Scheduler. And you can assign a script from all our hotkey and, and, and to get that to do it. So this is my beef with this at the moment, is that I've got all our hotkeys that I've been working on. Now, that's an open source software. I can go and get a whole lot of other people's um, scripts that they've actually done, test them out to see if they meet my need. And they've actually done all of these things. I can also... Take a script that I think is quite useful and share it with other people. I can share it as a script or I can compile it. So what that does, it takes all our hotkeys and compiles the script and all our hotkeys into an EXE file that I can hand to anybody and they can run that script. This is just for your own personal use and you can't share any of the code. To actually share this code, you'll either actually have to give somebody your one uh, one drive a password to let them get in, into your theme bob and then they log in under your name run your code and see how it works and then make another one have another uh and, and, and then build theirs from scratch or you actually have to do screenshots of all of this of this is how i'm stepping through and doing this particular process so it, it's being made to be very limited only for personal use it hasn't got a lot of the connectors so it's it's sort of like Here's a really limited version. So it's the $15 a month one, which you're getting for free now. Um, but you've got to go to $40 a month to be able to use some of the automation, robotic automation process stuff. And I think also to get a lot of the connectors that you may actually want to use. So um, they're giving you a little bit of a taster of some of those connectors down the side here, but a very limited amount of them. So, 
personally, I don't think it's worth me getting involved with this. I can see there's a few interesting little features. I'll put this to the side and absolutely forget it. Um, but other people might find this useful. As I said, it's a free tool and it can do some things. And if you're not that confident, something like the web recorder and the, the desktop recorder might be methods of actually doing some simple coding that might be useful and productive, uh, productive for you. In which case, I would suggest that you actually would learn a bit more about it. Me, I'm sorry, I'm going straight back to Visual Studio Code and all the hotkey scripts for most of the things that I want. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that's been of use to you. Um, if you found that useful, please give a thumbs up. Otherwise, ha. Oh,